What's up everybody? My name is Coach John. I lost 200 pounds and you can too. And one of the things I did well on my weight loss journey was get a high protein intake and it really helped. Today we're going to talk about how to use protein for weight loss, how much protein you need, and exactly how protein can help you lose weight. In previous videos we've talked about how to set up a diet in a very graceful way and hopefully an easy way that doesn't require you to cut out every single food that you normally eat that simply correctly assesses your maintenance, gets you into a slight deficit, and then we talked about the sorts of small adjustments you can make to constantly keep it consistently moving. Not too fast, not too slow. When it comes to successful dieting, we can sort of turn the prism a little bit and look at it from a different facet. It's very popular to look at setting up a diet in terms of breaking down your calories into certain macronutrients. These are carbohydrates, protein, and fat. All foods that we eat tend to fall into one of these three categories. I'll talk about the other two macros in other videos, but here we're gonna talk about protein. Protein is made up of amino acids, and amino acids are the essential building blocks of life. They're so essential that our body treats them with a bit more significance. When the body recognizes that these amino acids are entering our system through food, it tends to give us more credit, in a way, for the food we're eating. Now, when you eat protein, it doesn't magically burn more calories. It kind of does a little bit. We'll get to that. Getting yourself into a caloric deficit is the central requirement of a successful diet, and protein helps us do this. Obviously, you eat less. Usually, hunger levels go up. This can increase stress levels, cravings, snacking. A successful diet attempts to counteract these things with more than just white knuckling willpower, relying on delusions of discipline and perfectionism, frankly. Protein is one of the ways we can support ourselves and actually give ourselves a much better chance of responding to our natural cravings in a way that promotes success. For instance, when your brain recognizes protein entering your system per calorie, it's going to give off more satiety signals. These are the signals that signal your brain that you are full, that you've eaten enough in a meal. It also has a greater effect than fats or carbs on reducing ghrelin, which is our main hunger hormone. This means that when you base your meals around protein and you keep your overall protein levels high at each meal, you can feel fuller, faster, more satiated after your meal and have an easier time putting the fork down and not eating until your next meal time. What's more, there are studies that indicate that protein intake being high across the board can help with cravings in different parts of the day, specifically nighttime. If you're dealing with a lot of nighttime cravings, if you start to introduce more high protein foods, base your diet more around protein, this might help you combat nighttime cravings, along with other strategies that I have talked about in other videos and will continue to share with you. You know, the holidays just passed. This was an opportunity to share about protein leveraging with some of my clients. You know, when the holidays come around, I don't want people to be super strict on their diet. I, I believe that we are, bettering our lives so that we can get more enjoyment out of our lives. But I remember telling one client, hey, before you go into that big you know, Christmas Eve meal, get some protein in ahead of time because then it's gonna curb your appetite when it does come to the treats. When you hear the term protein leveraging, some people use it in the sense of eating protein before a meal so that you don't eat as much in the meal. Like say, if you're gonna have a cheat, eating a chicken breast before you go have pizza, it's gonna allow you to fill up on the pizza while not entirely filling up on the pizza, if you know what I mean. Other people refer to protein leveraging simply in terms of basing your meals around protein. Raising the quantity of protein in your meal, the quantity of calories coming from protein, thereby reducing the number of calories coming from other macros, thus ensuring a higher protein intake, higher satiety, lower baseline hunger levels throughout the day. And there are metabolic advantages to a high protein diet. There is something called the thermic effect of food, TEF or TEF. Digestion burns calories, but in the case of carbohydrates, we burn very few calories through digestion, maybe one to 3% of the calories we take in through carbohydrates. When we digest fats, around five to 10% of the calories we take in through fat are burned in the digestion of fat. With protein, it's between 20 and 30%, which means if you eat 100 calories of, of pure lean protein, 20 to 30 of those calories are gonna be burned in digesting the protein, separating the amino acids so that they can be sent for various uses throughout the body. While in most cases this is a small benefit, it's still a benefit, this is a game of inches, and every little advantage counts. High protein diets have been associated with lower visceral belly fat and with reduced weight rebound after diets are over, 
And this has a lot to do with what's going on in your body during a weight loss phase, right? Because we're really not trying to lose weight, we're trying to lose fat. Do we always lose primarily fat during a weight loss diet? Quite often, no. Quite often, we can lose half or more of the weight we're losing from lean mass and other tissues. This is not what we wanna do because our lean mass is metabolically active, meaning it burns calories throughout the day, even when we're at rest. And when we're exercising, that lean mass helps us burn more calories through that exercise. Whereas fat is usually metabolically inactive, it's not going to be burning calories for us, it's just a storage. So when you put your body into a prolonged caloric deficit, there is a temptation for your body to get rid of the metabolically active tissue because it's costing calories every day. And the ways we can encourage the body not to do that are to use our muscles, use our lean tissues, stimulate them so the body knows we need them for survival, so keep them around, and then to also support our lean tissues by providing the amino acids they need to strengthen, rebuild, repair, even when we're in a caloric deficit. And this is one of the biggest reasons that we see less rebound in dieters who chose a high protein route. It's natural for your body to burn fewer calories at the end of a diet than at the beginning because your total body mass has lessened. Your body has adapted to the calorie deficit and that's not a bad thing. That's exactly what we want your body to do during weight loss. But we can limit the amount of this adaptation with higher protein diets. Mm. And it's even possible to gain lean mass while you're in a caloric deficit, especially if you're heavily overweight, right? It's harder for very lean people to do this. But in your case, it might be very possible to add lean mass to your frame, but using resistance training and high protein intake and overall good nutrition to help offset caloric needs of your body that have been lowered through dieting. High protein diets are going to help you in the long run. Losing weight is not enough. We have to keep it off, right? We have to build a life where you can effortlessly keep the weight off to where your new normal includes activities and body processes that are gonna keep the fat off and keep the muscle on, if not growing. And everything I'm trying to teach you here is geared toward getting you to that place, not only where the weight is off, but where you can go along your merry way, have a great life, and not have to white knuckle your maintenance for the rest of your life. So protein is our friend. Protein really gives us a leg up. It's not magical, it doesn't burn the calories for us, it doesn't go to the gym for us, it doesn't put the fork down for us, but it is definitely our friend. And I recommend that if you're going to take a macro approach to your diet, setting up your macros, taking, okay, this is my, I'm gonna have 2000 calories today. What percentage of those do I want to be from proteins, fats, and carbs? You don't have to do that, but a lot of people do. I don't personally pay much attention to my macros except protein. I like my clients to count protein. If they wanna count fats and carbs for their own edification, that's great, but protein is the main focus. So how many grams of protein should you be eating in a day to promote fat loss to get all these benefits that we've talked about. The gold standard optimal recommendation seems to be one gram per pound of body weight. And you can eat as little as like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight and still see near optimal results. And the good news is that you can go well above one gram per pound of body weight if it suits you. If you like it, if it helps you stay on your calories, if it makes you feel good and energized, fewer cravings, protein is not dangerous to your health. There is a law of diminishing returns where maybe you'd be smarter spending those calories on some essential fats and maybe some carbohydrates for energy, but that's a topic for another video. So for instance, if you weigh 220 pounds, you could set your daily protein intake at 220 grams. Now for people who are very overweight, this gets tricky, right? Because the recommendations are really aimed closer to lean mass. So one recommendation is to take your ideal goal weight and use that as your baseline. If you're 360 pounds and your goal weight is 200 pounds, you could take 200 grams of protein per day as your goal. If you think 150 pounds is your goal weight, you could pick 150 grams as your goal. And now if, if you shoot for one gram per pound of lean body weight and you miss by a little bit, uh, you're still in that 0.8 grams per pound range. And obviously if you eat more than that, that's great. Now, some people recoil, I've seen this a lot, and they go, what, 150 grams of protein? How on earth does a person do that? If, if you find it startling 
the idea of eating this amount of protein in your day, that's actually kind of a good thing because it just shows how much room there is in your habits for healthier eating. Like there's a big opportunity to learn how to eat like a human being. And if you're looking for more ideas on how to get high protein foods into your diet, I will do another video just on that topic because I think it merits it. But rest assured there are lots of options for getting more protein into your diet. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you enjoy this content, subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend. You can go over to the Facebook group, Lose Weight with John for no cost support, post about your progress, ask questions over there. Please feel free, I'm trying to get that group more active. And if you're looking for one-to-one -one coaching, you can email me at johnoakscoaching at gmail.com. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.